Welcome back. I know you all have been like, where has Jamila been? What's been going on with the journey of more? <sighs> What's going on? Y'all, we are back. And today it's for the women, but it's also for the men who has a sister, the man who has a sister, the man who has a wife, the man who has a daughter, because we're going to be talking about the office of a daughter and what that really means, especially when you're navigating all of the different roles that you have as a CEO, maybe a, a corporate hero. All of the things you all know who I am. I am your lethal weapon and superpower. I help you get your business started, protect it through trademarks, contracts, copyrights, and as your business coach, because y'all don't be starting them right. Oops. Let me go on ahead and move on away from there. <laughs> but today I have someone who is special and near and dear to me. Um, I just want her to speak because when she speaks, you're going to hear it. Welcome, Kenyatta. Don't do me like that. Don't put me on the spot. We got to ease into it. Thank you so much for welcoming me to this amazing platform, Jamila. You are near and dear to my heart as well. I admire the work that you're doing in your space. You're such a trailblazer. You're so bold. You're so courageous. And I'm thankful that you thought enough of me to feel like there's something that God has given me that I can give your audience. So I'm grateful to be here today. Um, to those who don't know me, this is your first time experiencing me. My name is Kenyetta Simmons, and I am a change agent. I'm a global solution carrier in the industry of human resources, and I am the human resources business partner and advisor that you always knew that you needed, but maybe you didn't come into contact with for whatever reason. You experienced negative experiences with previous HR people in your career and throughout your life, but I am that person person who is here to advocate for the employee, helping you to go from passive to powerhouse in the workplace, and also helping your leaders and executive C-suite create workspaces that allow you to want to stay with your companies longer and advance on your own terms. So I love all things human resources. I love all things employee experience and creating and cultivating a workspace where you can show up as your full self and you can get the job done. You can make impact, but you can also be taken care of as well. So do you see, you, you see all of this? Like, wow. 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 Um, and I think she, you know, is a wife. Yes. Um, yes. She's a daughter of God. Yes. And I am learning day by day how yes. um, unique that is um, yes. and peculiar because not every yes. person or woman or man in yes. the church may actually be a man and woman of God. Yes. Um and so when you started to kind of think through this concept of the mm -hmm. office of a daughter, kind of lay that out for me. Yeah, honestly, Jamila, I can't take credit for that. I, first of all, honor God for the journey he has taken me on through this life. And we all have a story and I've grown mature enough in my faith in my walk with God to understand that we're overcomers, one, by the blood of the lamb and two, by the word of our testimony. And so I always am humbled that God will place me in spaces where I can share parts of my upbringing and things that I struggle with and, and experiences that he allowed me to go through to refine and sharpen me and the calling and the purpose he has in me. And a part of my lived experiences is dealing with trauma, rejection and abandonment. And I know that can be something that's common for a lot of your audience members. But for me, it started with my parents. I was not raised primarily by my mom or my dad. My grandmother actually raised me, my maternal grandmother. And so um, my mom was around physically, but she made it very clear at a young age. She didn't really have the desire to be a mom. Um, my dad was completely absent. And so unfortunately, I had to learn some difficult lessons and go through some difficult things around trauma with rejection and abandonment at an early age. So I can't even take credit for the whole concept of an office of a daughter because it wasn't until the past few years that I decided to be to get real with myself about where I am and how these trauma bonds and these roots uh, these demonic roots to abandonment and rejection have held me back in every area of my life from career, business, being a wife, showing up as a daughter, showing up as a sister, showing up as a professional, a business owner. I had to get real with myself and say, you know what, God, here's my mess. 
here's my trauma. I'm tired of being the victim. I'm tired of idolizing victimhood and I'm ready to get healed. Whatever it takes, I'm tired of going around this mountain. I'm tired of feeling sorry for myself. I'm tired of harboring unforgiveness against those who've harmed me, my parents who left me, who didn't want me. And I, I want to do the work, Father. I want to understand who I am in you. And that led me to someone by the name of Tiffany Montgomery. Some of you may know of her. I've been following her for a few years and she actually taught a cover by God, which is the ministry God gifted her. And one of those topics was on the office of a daughter. And that is what launched me into seeking scripture and eating the scroll and praying and asking God with the help of Holy Spirit, God, who am I as your daughter? Because my lived experiences taught me that my parents didn't want me. And I know that's not your will for me. And so everything I was seeing in my life, how I saw myself, how I showed up, the performative identity I developed at a young age was all connected to the trauma bonds of I didn't know what it felt like to be a daughter. I wasn't wanted by my earthly parents. So I never got the experience of being a daughter. I got the experience of being a granddaughter, being raised by my grandmother, but I, I didn't have any positive experiences around being a daughter. And so that is what launched me into this search of the scripture and intense prayer. God, show me my identity. And then the more I began to ask God to show me my identity as a wife, as a woman, as a sister, as a professional, the more God began to take me back to the office of being a daughter. Before you could be a wife, before you could be a woman, you've got to return back to the foundations I created you under, and that's a daughter. And so for me, it was understanding who does God say that I am, not what my life experiences have tried to convince me I'm worthy of or unworthy of, but who does God say I am? And God tells me that he knew me while I was in my mother's womb. Regardless of what my mother was going through at the time, God still knew me. He knew my inner workings. He knit me together. He loved me enough. He had plans for me. Regardless of the decisions of my parents, their mistakes, their shortcomings, I had to come to realize that they were only giving me what they had. Now, I could have said that wasn't what I needed, but realistically, they could only give me what they had. And so God had to take me back to the drawing board using Tiffany Montgomery as a vessel to help me understand what's the office of a daughter? What does it mean to be a daughter? And, and I've been on that journey for the past almost two years now, recoding, redefining who I am from the state of being a daughter, humbling myself as a child, going to God with a childlike mind as if he's my daddy because he is my daddy. And allowing him to reshape my identity as a daughter, as his daughter. Not what others said about me, not what my parents said. They didn't want me. They wish they would have had an abortion. They're not here. They don't want to be here. They don't want to have anything to do with me. But what does God say about me? He wants me. He wants that's us all. Really good. That, that, <laughs> that's really good. Um, and I, I think one of the things that um, I see and notice with the business owners that I coach, um, part of it is that identity building piece that has to be done. And yeah. that determines how far they're willing to go um, when it as it relates to becoming a CEO and living yeah. out um, what it means to be a CEO. And so it's like, if you don't go to God and yeah. get clarity on your purpose on your identity mm -hmm. and all of those different things yeah. that then impacts every other thing that you do yeah. and then causes you to be at a place where you're like ah yeah. you know you're suffering with uh imposter syndrome you're suffering mm -hmm. with insecurities you're suffering mm -hmm. with um identity issues that are literally lies and planted into yeah. you but you may not be aware of that because you have not gone to figure out what that office looks like for you right. um, in communing with God with that. And so I think that that's key for right. every woman listening and for every man, because this right. is a transferable skill, right? right? You're able to say like, well, have I figured out what the office of a son is? And what right. is that like to be, you know, a, 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 you know, a husband or whatever, right. and all of those different things, it matters. Um, right. and, and that's, that's, so good. that's so good that you say that because I found 
God helped me to see me. Anytime we go to God, I, or I'll speak for me. I can't speak for everybody. Uh -huh. Anytime that I have gone to God as God has matured me in wisdom, as he's increased my wisdom, because the Bible tells us, you know, if you want wisdom, ask. He'll give liberally. He'll give generously. Wisdom is, is a, a, the necessary principle. Wisdom is what we need, not more money. All those things will come as a byproduct of wisdom and spending time in his presence. And one of the things the Lord immediately convicted me of on this journey of the office of a daughter is how much I have made our relationship transactional. And he also taught me in this process of redefining my identity in him is that based on how we build relationships with people on this earth, our earthly parents, siblings, friends, if we have a toxic relationship or foundation, that is how we will ultimately begin to attribute God. So if our earthly father wasn't there and was absent, then we have a tendency to treat God the same way in our relationship with him. We treat him as if God's going to leave us. He's going to walk out on us. Same with our mom. Same with pe other people of significance in our lives. Depending on the dynamic of our relationship with significant people in our earthly lives, that oftentimes influences how we see God. It influences how we interact with God. Whether we treat our relationship with God as transactional, we go to God when we need something. I need you to move on my behalf. I need you to give me favor with starting this business. I need you to give me favor in, in the workplace. Give me favor in this job search. Give me favor. You know, let me get this salary. Let me get this. Let me help me land this. But we don't really prioritize relationship and, and getting to know our father and so we miss out on so much because we only want his hand and we don't want his heart. We don't want his character. We don't want his perspective. We don't want his leadership because the first time God tells us to do something that's contrary to what our flesh wants to do, we're ready to put God on the back burner. And I'll, I'll come back to this faith thing later on. God, I'm not really feeling that. I ain't, I'm not ready for that yet. So I'm, I'm going to wait. And, and kind of delay my obedience. <laughs> ah, delay my obedience. No, that that's really good. And I think it's 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 groundbreaking for some, and it's a mm -hmm. reminder for others around yeah. what it means to really yeah. walk with God. I remember this old song, and it's been in my like spirit for a while. It's like, um, walk with me, Lord, walk with yes. me. Lord. And um, while I'm on this journey um, and it takes me back to the scripture, like acknowledge him in all of your ways and he yes. will direct your path. And yes. one of the things that I have just come to a very clear standpoint is around that acknowledgement mm -hmm. and looking for that direction and mm -hmm. seeking the wisdom of God. But let me tell you what the one thing that I found out is you can't go to God to build a greater relationship and then want your natural life to remain as is. Yes. Because when you go to him, he works in different time frames from the spirit. And so literally I have to then manage, okay, God, well, how do I live life if you want to deal with me and download wisdom at 3 a.m.? Yeah. Right. How do I deal with it if I've just gone to bed at 2 a.m. and you got me back up at seven because you want me to be in this place and space in the moment because mm -hmm. this is what it requires. Mm -hmm. And so another piece of this is we were all sent here for a purpose, for yeah. a reason, and we have to be built out for yeah. the assignment. Yeah. And part of what you're talking about is being built out for the assignment. And so as you're navigating all of these different roles, I want to lean into that CEO role. Like, yeah. how has all of that shaped you as a CEO? That's a good question. I will say, you know, prior to getting real with myself and, and, and getting to the point where I'm like, OK, God, I've tried this on my own. I've moved through this life harboring unforgiveness resentment. It's led to imposter syndrome. I'm always second guessing myself. I have this perfectionist mindset, this performance identity, this performative identity. I equate what I do with my worth. When people don't compliment me, when they don't acknowledge my hard work, you know, I drive myself down a spiral of depression. I finally got to a point where I'm like, God, if you love me, you got to help me out of this. 
Mm. You have to help me out of this. And I surrender. I had to get to a place of surrender because sometimes we can think we're too smart for our own good. And that goes back to leaning not to our own understanding. And a lot of times when you're when you've been through traumatic things where you've had to become your own protector or you tell yourself you have to, you're really developing a savior complex. Because it's not your job to protect yourself. It's not your job to provide for yourself. It's not your job to cause all things to work together. Like that's God's responsibility. That's not our responsibility. And so going through these things really embedded a deep seed of insecurity and imposter syndrome in me where I second guessed everything. I would start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. God has no shortage of creative ideas when it comes to me, HR. I've had a million business ideas, a million side hustles I've started and stopped. And we know how it feels in the beginning. We all hyped. God done gave us a download. Sometimes in the middle of the night, you got the you got the plan in your head. You're going to make a post on social media. Everybody going to like it up. And then you start doing it for a month or two and then it fizzles out. You're inconsistent. You're not disciplined. You start and stop. You're worried about what people are thinking, whether or not people are going to support it. And so for me, experiencing trauma and abandonment and rejection and insecurity, it being unhealed so long, it truly has delayed me. I, I firmly believe I'm supposed to be further than what I am right now. And I can own that in my maturity and understanding. I know I'm supposed to be further than where I am. But because of my insecurity, because I, I'm just now tapping into and, and tapping into total surrender and surrendering to God to help me to refine my identity and redefine what it is in him. It has caused me to be delayed. Now, we know, again, he can cause all things to work together for our good. He can redeem the time. But I strongly believe because I yielded to and I idolized that victimhood. I idolized insecurity. I idolized imposter syndrome, people feeling bad for me. I allowed that to hold me back and prevent me from going full force because I know that I'm called to the mountain. I know that I'm called to entrepreneurship. I know that I'm called to dominate in my industry. But because I've, I've struggled with this thing and I wasn't serious about it and I was OK living in the struggle, I was OK harboring unforgiveness. I was OK with just posting and getting people to like it and knowing that people were cheering me on. That was enough for me. And then when that fizzled out, there was no substance. There was no meat because I wasn't seeking God. My relationship with God was transactional. It was on the back burner. So how, how am I really getting strategy to see it through when the motivation left? When the, all that was left was the insecurity in the back of my mind, the enemy telling me, remember, your parents didn't want you. So who going to want this? Who going to support you? Your, your own parents didn't want you. So we got to check our mindset because the enemy will continue to use old experiences. He'll use vulnerable moments, things that you thought you were healed from. You thought because you went to a therapist for about six months, you good. And when you least expect it, the enemy got you with a thought, a sense of smell, a memory that triggers you and it holds you back. So for me, getting getting real with myself and surrendering has definitely made a difference in my business because now I approach my business from the mind state of I'm not doing this to appease other people because that's what it's been about for me. People pleasing. And it started with my foundation. What could I do in school if I could bring home straight A's to please my parents, to make them want to love me, to make them want to be active in my life, to make them want to care about me? Maybe if I was more active in school, active in academics, if I did well, if I went to college, graduated top of my class, if I got a good career, they would finally be proud of me. And I had to realize with the help of the Holy Spirit, Kenyatta, there is nothing you can do to change someone's mind about you. And at the end of the day, it's about an audience of one. Even in your business, your end goal should be the audience of one. Pleasing God. Is God pleased with every single business transaction? Is God pleased with your efforts? Is God pleased with your direction? Is God pleased with your motives, your why? If, if God's not pleased, why are we doing it? Because now it's become about money. It's become about all these other things, financial security. And those things aren't bad things. But if we're not careful, we begin to idolize those things. That's why it's important to remain in the state of an office of a daughter and a son. 
Because if you're in the state of a daughter or a son, think about how children look up to their parents for everything. They want their parents' validation to know that they're on the right track, that they're doing the right thing. God wants us to be so sold out on him that there is nothing too small that you won't first go to God about. As a child goes to their daddy or their mama and at mom, what you think about this? Dad, what I really want to know what you think. about. God wants us to look to him the same way as a child. Come to him as a child, even as it concerns our business for strategy, for connections, for relationship. What decisions to make when? How do I maneuver in this season? How do I maneuver when the, the economy is bad? How do I maneuver when the economy is good? Lord, show me favor. Teach me the bold prayers that I should be praying. Lord, help me to consecrate myself. Lord, help me to commune with you. Lord, help me to put my business ideas at your feet. And you affirm and you prune and you refine the things that are not of you. Because I'm not here for social media's attention. I don't need to be an influencer. It's an audience of one always. And I didn't always understand the whole concept of an audience of one because I struggled so much with people pleasing. The services I offered, is it pleasing the right people? Are they willing to pay for it? Is it too cheap? Is it too much? Are they going to like it? Are they going to buy it? Are they going to listen? Are they going to click onto the live? I began to focus on the validation of man and prioritize that above God. And so once my mindset changed about my identity, this business thing has become a bit easier because now it's not strategizing on the next big viral thing to get the attention of man. It's God, what you want me to do in this season? Should I be laying low? Should I be being quiet? Should I be studying? Should I be consuming information? Should I be getting training? Should I be going to these events for professional development? Who should I hire? What should I invest my money in? Who do I, what pieces do I maneuver where? That's what makes the difference. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really key. And that goes back to the point around knowing your assignment. Yeah, yeah. And going, you know, like, if you think about the army, like when you get your assignment, you have to go back every so often. Like I've been in the army, <laughs> but you have to go back every so often and just, you know, make sure everything is on track and um, you're flowing in the way in which it was designed because your business likely has a mission and a vision that is from God. And I think that you have to uh, take a step back from time to time to balance what you hear mm -hmm. and balance what you hear. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're going to professional development spaces, you have coaches and everything like that. I always tell my clients like, look, I am your guide. I'm not your God. So at any given moment, if he is vetoing what it is that I'm saying, you yield to that. And mm -hmm. I think part of that Two means understanding the times and seasons that you are in, in terms of your personal development or your spiritual development. Yeah. Because if you are in a space of like personal or spiritual development and you're looking for certain results, newsflash, God is looking for a result from you. Yes. Right. He's looking to build you up. He's looking to pull you out. He's looking to prune you. And sometimes if you don't have that spiritual understanding, you will then go and fight for things in the natural space and probably place expectations uh, in places and spaces that shouldn't exist and then live at a level of disappointment. And then that could cause you to then have some resentment towards God because it's like, well, what are you doing here? What's happening here? But when you sit down and you're like, okay, this is the assignment. What season are we in? Um, so what should I be looking into? Like, there are times when I'm like, I don't need to be out here on social media every day. No. I don't need to be out here sending a thousand emails. Jamila, I actually just need you to sit down and I'm going to send you your clients. Mm -hmm. But if I don't sit and hear and pray and ask and, you know, ask for the direction, then I won't know that. But mm -hmm. that also goes into a place of understanding trust. Yes. And I don't think that we have understood trusting God. We trusted man. 
We trusted our jobs. We mm -hmm. trusted opportunities. And, and yes, God does work through men, yeah. but it is he. And there is on my um on my screensaver right now, I think it's Psalm something, but um on there it talks about how um my soul waiteth only upon God in expectation. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I always push myself back like, well, God, I need a client or two or five, yeah. but I don't expect them to do anything. I expect you to do everything through them. Yeah. So yeah. now I know who to give the glory to. I know who to go back to. But it's like you said, I did the work to face me. Right. And one of the things that I'm finding out in life is like we don't want to face the reality of who we are what we don't know and what ignorance has yep. put us in position for. And yep. in my friend group right now, people are like, well, give yourself grace. Listen, I'm a realist. Yeah. This is the reality. I'm not, yeah. not giving myself grace, yeah. but ignorance cost. Yes. So let, let's stay here with this cost. Yeah of yeah. ignorance, the consequence of ignorance, because it costs on so many different levels. Like it can cost you as a CEO. It can cost you uh, as, you know, a, a daughter, a wife or whatever. You know, there are so many ways that it costs you. Where ha how have you navigated trying to find like revelation and wisdom to then push out uh, places of ignorance in your life? That, that's a good question. That's so good. It is so loaded. <laughs> I want to go into a mini sermon about ignorance because I think my life experiences of just being so hard on myself and setting such high expectations of myself have caused me to, it's almost like sometimes God will allow me to experience or encounter moments or seasons of ignorance to teach me a lesson because sometimes we can pray and ask God for things. And sometimes God will allow things to happen just to show you what you think you need is, is the complete opposite. And if we don't go through it and he gives us what we want, it'll end up crushing us and killing us. And so I have to consistently remind myself of God's mercy and his grace, God's mercy and his grace towards me, even in those moments of ignorance, because I think I don't even give other people a chance to beat me up. I'm so hard on myself. I'm so critical of myself. I'm so critical of my work. I'm critical of where I am at in business, where I should be. I should have been further along. And why did I make this decision? And this partnership was a terrible partnership. And this person ran over me and they took stuff from me. And I was overlooked by these people and this opportunity. And I worked hard and I wasn't honored like I felt like I was supposed to have been honored. But one of the things that I learned about ignorance is when it comes to ignorance and timing, we literally don't have time. We don't have the time that we think that we have. And sometimes ignorance throws us so off course that we got to go through healing that God never intended for us to go through. If we would have just listened to him instead of moved on our own, following ignorance. Now we're having to unlearn stuff. We're having to forgive things that we would have never even been on our plate had we just yielded to God. Ignorance has cost me business deals. Ignorance has cost me opportunities to showcase God through my assignment because of my ignorance and following man, following my own fleshly desires, yielding to insecurity instead of planting and anchoring my identity and who God says I am. But I've come to learn that no one is too far down in the gutter of ignorance that God can't pull them out of. It's all about your posture. It's all about your surrender. It's all about your humility. We know that the Bible says that pride goeth before a fall. So we're human. We're subject to, it's not a matter of if we're going to make ignorant decisions or find ourselves in situations as a result of ignorance. It's a matter of when, but it's all about your heart posture. It's all about your willingness to come to God and say, you know what, God, this is where I am. I'm but a filthy rag. I've made these choices. I, I take responsibility for where I am and I need your help, God. God, I repent. 
I thank you that you didn't allow me to be harmed in the middle of this ignorance. I thank you that you didn't take my life in the middle of this ignorance. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. So it's all about your heart posture. And for me, my heart posture through it all. I've not always been perfect. I'm the first one to tell you there have been seasons of my life where I happily walked around in unforgiveness and bitterness and pride and ego. I felt like I deserved to, to get vengeance, get revenge because of how I've been treated. That didn't get me nowhere. It didn't get me anywhere until my heart posture changed. Even in the midst of that, God was merciful because he, he knew the assignment. He didn't give up on the assignment. So I'm a firm believer that you are never too far down in the gutter of ignorance, being bliss. You failed. You made the wrong choice. You connected with the wrong people. You trusted the wrong people. You made mistakes. You're never too far where God can't reach down and pull you back up. But it's about your heart posture through it all. Are you postured to say, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm coming to you humbly. God, I'm bringing this to you. I'm laying it at your feet. God, I repent. Repentance is the key. Consistent repentance, a discipline of repentance. And repentance simply means to make a decision to turn, to go in a different direction. Because a lot of times we go to God and we ask God for forgiveness and we apologize, but we find ourselves doing the right thing because our heart hasn't changed. Our mind hasn't changed. Deliverance, repentance is a choice. It don't take all the fans, the fanfare, all of that stuff is great. But it's, at the end of the day, it's a choice. So, yes, we can just as easily land ourselves in situations because of our ignorance, but we're one choice away from turning it around with our heart posture and our surrender, surrendering to God. God, I made a mess and a mockery of what you trusted me with. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. On my own, I did not handle this well. I fumbled the bag. I fumbled the ball. I fumbled the influence. I fumbled the time. I fumbled the job. I fumbled the idea. I, when you told me to go, I fumbled it. When you told me to speak, I fumbled it. When you told me to do, I fumbled it. But God, I'm bringing this to you with a heart of repentance and a posture. I'm willing to turn and do something different. I need your help. And acknowledging that we can't do it on our own. We have to lean on God. But I find that if you don't know God's character, if you don't know God, it's hard to trust someone you don't know, right? It's hard for us to trust in the natural when we don't know a person. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. We can't say that we trust a God that we don't know. Yeah, That's why we got to get past this transactional part of a relationship with God. And it can't just be for show. It can't just be for social media likes and a good shout and praise break and a good viral video. At the end of the day, we got to have a real relationship with God. That's communion with God. In order to trust God, you got to know God's character. What are you trusting? Do you even know what you're trusting? Okay, but then let's lean in here. That goes back to that ignorance piece. Yeah. And so you're living, you're unintentionally living a life of ignorance because yeah. you're ignorant of the true God that you serve. Yeah. And so one of the things that I said to myself in my, my coaching, teaching yeah. strategy is all um, maturing is yeah. because I know that there is a God of Jamila, just like yeah. there was a God of Jacob, there was a mm -hmm. God of Isaac, there's a God of Abraham. Yeah. And I've seen who God is. And sometimes I'm like, I'm calling on a God of Esther that did blah, 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 blah. I'm a God of this, right? Mm -hmm. And so something practical is like, okay, you may not know what you don't know, but as a business owner, here are the things that I want you to lean into around what you need to know and where you can afford ignorance. Yeah. You can't afford ignorance in finances. And so yeah. you have to manage them very differently as a business mm -hmm. owner to yeah. deal with the ebbs and flows of business. Yeah. You cannot be ignorant with marketing. You cannot be ignorant yeah. with Sales. You cannot be ignorant of the law. Right. Mm -hmm. And so our people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so is your business really dead? But yeah. you think it's alive because you have some money coming in. That yeah. may not be the case. It may be on life support because yeah. of the level of ignorance that you have. So you can't just go out there and be product and service focused. Right. And 
when you talk about you know going to God and him giving you wisdom freely it also yes. says in the word and all thy getting get an yes. understanding understanding yes. is a greater level of knowledge so yes. one you have to dispel the ignorance and then you have to get the knowledge then you have to know how to apply the knowledge in various situations right yes. and so one of the things that i see happening in this space is that there a lot of entrepreneurs falsely believe that they're failing simply yeah. because they are ignorant on what it means to be a CEO. That's good. And so in this new wave mm -hmm. of like work that I'm doing, I understand my assignment clearer mm -hmm. now because I I'm allowing God to recode me, which is redeveloping mm -hmm. my purpose and allowing me to discover my identity in a newer way is to close the CEO gap. Yeah. Right. Because like, if you never become a CEO, you never really run a business. That's right. That's right. And to your point, Jamila, we don't know what we don't know. Right. That's why heart posture is so important because God knows that we have a finite level of knowledge, depending on the walks of life you came from. God gives you an idea. That doesn't necessarily mean you know how to execute as a CEO, right? So your heart posture has got to be in a place where you can ask God to reveal to you the right people that you need to connect to, where this not the tapping into the streams of where this knowledge is going to come from. And you can't allow your insecurity of someone being smarter than you, being in spaces where people know more than you, or maybe they're more articulate than you and they're throwing around jargon and language you don't know. That can't be an intimidation factor that prevents, that you allow to prevent you from getting the knowledge and tapping into those concepts like sales, like finances, like accounting, managing your money, cash flows, inflows, outflows, knowing the legal aspects of a business, protecting your business, protecting your idea, protecting your business name, the most appropriate formation of a business, right? Paying taxes. You can't allow what you don't know to stop you from getting that information. And a lot of times it goes back to pride. A lot of times things go back to their spiritual foundations. It's pride. Because the information is out there. It's Wait, there. Kenyatta, Kenyatta, no, we're not going to skirt past that pride because I feel like throughout my adult life, God is just showing me time and time again yeah. that where pride is. And somebody is going to think pride is someone who we deem as just like proud, conceited, those type of things. But pride is also you believing more in you than you believing yep. more in God. So you yep. think your decision is better. So insecurity yep. is a form of pride, right? Yep. Disobedience is a form of pride. And so if you don't lean into those parts of pride, yep. Just because you think that it is one way, you are letting ignorance rule and reign in your life. And God resists the proud. He resists the proud. And Absolutely. so you have to go and, you know, really lean into that. And I think that goes back to the piece of we... And, and I hope people will share this. Yeah. This, this, this is key. When you should look at your coach or whoever it is that you're thinking of hiring and see what it is, where pride shows up, yeah. because that will tell you what yeah. they're able to give to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Because at anything that any of us know is incomplete because the right. only one that has the full knowledge of everything is God. Absolutely. So he is right. leader. Right. So I'm not telling you I know everything. I'm just telling you that I'm a great vessel for what you need right, right. now. And I'm going to give you some information that's going to be great. And then right. you're going to have to get some more information on how to use it specifically for your life. That's right. That's right. You're so, right. And I, I love that you emphasize the fact that insecurity is a form of pride. Because a lot of us think if I'm insecure, I'm so afraid and I'm fearful and I'm just so timid and I'm insecure and I don't trust myself. 
But that thing will turn into pride quicker than you know it. You make your boast in insecurity. You're quick to attribute everything. The reason why you don't do something, the reason why you don't show up, the reason why you don't invest when God tells you to invest, the reason why you don't make sacrifices where, when, and how God tells you to make sacrifices, we always attribute it to insecurity. So insecurity is not only a form of pride, it's a form of idolatry. It's a form of idolatry. We idolize insecurity because it's a hiding place for us. I'm hiding under the umbrella of insecurity. So God, you can't tell me to go. I'm insecure. I don't trust who you've made me to be, what you've equipped me with. I don't trust it. So we hide. I don't trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Insecurity can be a form of idolatry. Mm. Well, I idolize my inadequacies and the things that I don't feel like I have enough of. Or I feel like I'm not enough. So I'm telling God, my maker, my creator, who does all things well and creates everything for his good pleasure. God, the way you wait, you the way you made me is not enough. You were missing something. Go on to God with your pride. Go on to God with your pride. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 what that is. Like I'm gonna tell you what the yeah. devil told me, and why what the devil told me is yeah. right. <laughs> like what? Like, you're wrong. The creator of all things. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> when you created me and you gave me this idea, you filled me with giftings and anointings. You fell short somewhere, God. Something ain't right because I'm insecure. I don't trust me. Yeah, and that's yeah. a dangerous place to be in when you can't trust yourself. Because how are you gonna trust other people when you don't trust yourself? How yeah. is he supposed to see you clients when you don't even trust yourself to be a good steward? Your stewardship is off. Yeah, that stewardship, that's a whole nother thing. But I, I want you know, someone really is like, you know, really struggling with insecurities yeah. and yeah. self-doubt and um yeah. imposter syndrome. So I would push you to go find characters in the Bible that Absolutely. overcame it. Like Gideon always comes to mind. And somebody mm -hmm. was saying, Jamila, you're not Gideon. I was like, hold on. I, I'm, I'm clear I ain't Gideon. But let me tell you, Gideon had enough nerve to say, God, want to tell me if this happened, okay. If this happened, okay. Because mm -hmm. sometimes and this is so good. Generational patterns, yeah. generational communication. Yeah. You come out the womb yeah. with that insecurity, yeah. right? And so we're not going to gloss over the fact that that could be your reality. It was passed down from generation to generation to generation. And now today you are here to be the curse breaker, chain breaker, trailblazer in your family, right? Yeah. But when you sit in your office, whether you sit in the office of a daughter, sit in the office of a son, you have to be willing to submit yes. to putting it all out there and saying, oh, wretched soul that I am. Yeah. And doing that continually at every level, because yeah. that is the thing that is required. So one that you don't think is you that's ever doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. There is, there's no way that you can be a generational curse breaker because to your point, somewhere there is an open door. Somewhere along the generational lines, there is an open door and we're called to be repairers of the breach. And you can't be a repair. That job alone, being a repairer of the breach and closing those doors so that you can move forward confidently as a CEO, confidently who and who God has called you to be. That's not something that's an easy feat. You have to be equipped. And the only way that you can be adequately equipped to be a repairer of the breach is sitting at God's feet consistently. And that shouldn't change no matter how he elevates you. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's a test. It's a test. If I elevate you and give you what you want, are you going to remain at my feet? Am I still going to be your one and final source of truth? not your friends, not social media. Am I going to be what we like to call in HR, your primary source verification? Am I your primary source that you come to to verify? God, am I in the right space? Am I doing the right things? Am I saying what you've called me to say? Am I doing what you call me to do? Am I consecrating myself? 
Am I fasting? Am I praying? Am I interceding? Am I aligned with your will every step of the way? And to your point, sometimes God's will is for you to be quiet, for you to be hidden for a season, for you to be nurtured and refined and pruned. And we don't like that. We don't like, we, oh, everybody want to be a slingshot. Everybody want to be a slingshot. <laughs> Like, let's keep it real. I can't stand it. I'm just like, how many of these do I gotta go through? But like <laughs> everybody's I, going to be locked out. But then when, when you're locked out and you feel the pressure, you're like, God, I don't know if I'm ready. That insecurity to come knocking. Man, man, come he knocking. he is one of a kind. And I think I think I want us to land here on. When the, the reason why you have to get clear on recoding yourself to really live in your purpose and your identity, and that's your respective offices and things of that nature, is because that is the thing that keeps you out of the trap of comparison. Mm -hmm. And so, especially in this business space, you will listen to someone who has results that are their results, and we don't know what those what the cost of those results are for eternity. Yeah. Right. Because one of the things that I am recognizing is, is that people are now using God to platform mm -hmm. them rather mm -hmm. than allowing God to use them and yeah. building a platform for God. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a thing where you you may be like, well, this person said they made a million dollars in a day, but what was the cost of that in eternity? Yeah. Right. Maybe you are supposed to make a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars in a day. And then when you steward that, well, you will get to that other place because you have a different landing spot in eternity yeah. that they may not be at. Yeah. Any last like thoughts? Here. You have to be cognizant at all times and understanding your walk is not my walk. Your capacity is all about capacity. God knows our capacity. He knows the ending from the beginning, right? He knows the cost and what's going to add up in eternity. So God is such a great father that he would not give us anything out of the ignorance of our own heart and asking that's going to crush us and prevent us from reaching eternity. And so we have to constantly stay at the feet of God, asking God to help us to understand and accept. It's not just understanding, but an acceptance of my capacity. Everybody's not called to be multimillionaires. As popular as it is, we don't all have the same capacity to be multimillionaires. Some of, some of us will squander that money. We, we say we would help God's people and do what God called us to do, and we were making it about us. And we'd be on a, a, a bullet train to hell with a multi, with a with millions of dollars. We'd be on a bullet train to hell. God knows our capacity. And so when we ask God for understanding of that capacity, asking for acceptance, God help me to steward this capacity and accept that it's not going to look like anyone else's capacity. It's not going to look like anyone else's assignment. But God, I'm okay with it. I'm thankful that you chose me. Because there's a there's billions of people on the face of this planet that you could choose at any time, but you thought enough of me. I'm your friend. You thought me worthy enough for this assignment. It doesn't matter how heavy, how beautiful, how glamorous others think the assignment is. The fact that he chose us alone is enough for us to constantly be on our face before God in gratitude and worship. Because he doesn't have to choose us at any point in time. He has the authority and the sovereignty to make a choice on someone else. So we owe God to accept his, the capacity he's given us because he loves us enough that he won't give us something that's going to crush us in a way that it's going to harm us. Now, it's going to crush us in the sense that it's going to produce oil as it should. We have to go through the crushing and the refining, but it's not going to crush us to the point where we don't even have an opportunity to one day see him in peace and experience eternity with him. So it's about our perspective. We got to have a heavenly perspective and a sober mindset to understand. Today matters. No, nothing is wasted. And I don't have the time that I think I have to wallow in insecurity, to wallow in ignorance. That posture matters because we don't have time. 
with the capacity he gives us, he expects us to be about our father's business. As a CEO, as a husband, as a wife, as a career professional, we are supposed to be about our father's business. And we have to eliminate every distraction, every distraction. And our capacity is the vehicle that allows us to be about our father's business. Well, there you have it. The great Kenyatta. <laughs> um, you all, it's been a pleasure to uh come back and be in community and just see what uh, this new season is going to be like. And um, I just implore you to connect with Kenyatta. Um, you never know how you may need an HR specialist, uh, an employee relations specialist in your life. I always think you should keep one on deck, especially if you're a woman and a person of color. Just my little two cents. And if you're a business owner, at some point you're going to need to hire folks. And so you want to make sure you know how uh, you have a criteria for hiring the right type of people um, mm -hmm. with the right job descriptions and things of that nature. I just love that we're just so multifaceted, right? Because mm -hmm. it's just like you can speak to so many different things. I can speak to this one, but like, mm -hmm. you need you need it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you all, as you, if you've identified, like I have a CEO gap and I want mm -hmm. support, um, you know, I have a legal gap, I want support, then don't shy away from reaching out because yeah. ignorance is costing you, right? Yeah. It's costing you time, it's costing you money, it's costing you energy, it's costing you peace. Um, yeah. And in this season, I'm assigned to certain people. And so maybe you are one of those people. Y'all, it is time to really live in the fact of becoming more, being more so that you can do more on your assignment. Take care, it's been great.